Uh, just the uh, you know last game was the battle went down to the end. Y'all anticipating another big battle here with the rival Saints? Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously playing them the first time and, and playing them in the past, it's really well coached. Players play really hard, specifically on the defensive side of where uh, each level of defense experienced knows exactly what uh, their coach and asked to do, uh, and they play physical. And so um, we obviously know we've got our, uh, our hands full with this unit coming in. Um, they're good against almost everything. So it's another great challenge for us, just like it has been in the past. And, uh, I got a theory that y'all are doing pretty good with uh, the quick passing games for your 10 games, but in the last six, you got 21 sacks. People, uh, what's happening there with the pass yeah, blocking? I, I think anytime you know you get into the sack numbers, right, and been a part of this for all different teams and ways to look at it, you know, rarely is it just one issue, right? It could be on any given play. It could be. Uh, everything from the timing between the receivers and the quarterbacks, the tight ends and the quarterbacks, or an issue in communication, um, or just bad on the coach's design at times. There's nothing open. Um, but again, I think when you go back at the end of the year and you go through it and you evaluate each one of the instances, not just in sacks, but when plays don't work or are not successful, um, you obviously take a, a hard evaluation, you look at it and see you know, where you can get better, where you can hopefully make sure that doesn't happen again. Um, always chasing perfection. We obviously know that's not always attainable or ever, but our whole point is to make sure we go through that process um, and, and see exactly in our minds where we can get better. And then obviously moving forward, what we need to do to do that in practice, as well as how we implement that in games. How do you control guys like uh, Cam, Jordan and uh, Davenport, I guess he's doing a little bit. I saw Davis chipping a little bit last time. Oh. Yeah, I don't think you control those guys. I think, you know, again, they've, uh, they've had success in this league for a reason. Um, respect everybody that they have defensively, uh, especially the coaches. And it's going to be one of those things where, again, um, they're a physical, fast unit. Uh, and you have to be ready and prepared for it and uh, go out there and give your best effort. And Coach Allen is who I guess you're referring to as his units. Is there yep. a signature trait to them? And yeah, you can just tell by the, the, uh, in the way in which the confidence in which they play. Um, I've told you guys all year long, you know, their scheme, there's no doubt they're sound. But then you see the way the players play within the scheme and the confidence and the communication and the physicalness in which they bring in each play. And it's just not in one area. All levels of the defense bring it. Uh, it's obviously a testament to what they do and what their philosophical beliefs are and how those players are bought in. And, and again, you watch it and, you're, and you respect them, just like I said the first time. Thanks, Steve. <laughs> Go ahead, Josh. Oh, OK. Um, I, I don't think we'll probably get to talk to you from now on. You guys are disappointed that I know. <laughs> I could tell. Yeah. I could tell. So just a big picture, how have you seen this offense evolve from maybe what you thought it was sure. in training camp to now what it is now? Yeah, that's a good question. I think that is the word, right? I mean, evolve. Um, said it to you guys before, you start training camp with a certain idea of who you may have or what we think they're good at. And as the season progresses for all different reasons, right, you continue to maneuver and evolve into you know, whatever that Sunday needs to go ahead and, and try to get a win on the offense. And no different than each position. You can look at each position. You can see within each of those groups, different players having to step up at different times, different combinations of guys out there. We play a lot of personnel. Um, and so guys who maybe when we started training camp and as we move through the preseason, you, you may have thought, OK, um, this guy might not get a shot early on. Well, as you fast forward into the season, uh, those guys that maybe were behind someone else stepped up and took a larger role. And I think that's the one thing that Coach Mitt's done a phenomenal job of, in my opinion, is he's constantly, since the day he took this job, has preached the fact that everybody has a chance to play. You go out and compete. Um, there is no status in terms of, of different things. And guys understand that, hey, if you go out there, you put a good day's work in and practice, you continue to be consistent and improve. Um, you'll get a chance to play. And I think if you look at the roster on offense specifically, we've had a number of different guys who've taken offensive snaps, meaningful offensive snaps, and uh, thankful to work for those guys. From the outside looking in, it seems like one of the most kind of obvious 
examples of the evolution of the offense is in the run game and, and establishing it. Uh, I remember Arthur talking, it was probably like a month and a half ago, and he kind of said sometimes it takes a little longer for the run game to become established. Why do you kind of think that is, and how has this year kind of been an example of that? Yeah, I think anytime you know, you're working with a different combination of guys, so if you look at the interior, right, you, you implement a center and a guard, right, that hasn't necessarily played with the tackle and the other guard and tackle. And you take time in terms of working those combinations together, gelling together, getting on the same page of verbal and nonverbal communication. And again, it's also, it's not just those guys, it's the quarterback making sure that we're in the right play. It's the back tracks. Um, it's their ability to set up the blocks for the offensive line and the tight ends being in communication with the O-line. And then the, the perimeter, which I think the perimeter has done a great job all year of finishing uh, their blocks, not just letting their guy make the play, um, constantly being around the football. And I think that's where the offensive line, the tight ends, the backs, everybody has evolved the fact that everybody's trying to be around the ball carrier at all times. Um, and I think when you're around the ball, good things happen. And that's what we continue to preach. If you go back to the spring and even throughout camp and you're installing th this new scheme, how, how much of an asset is it to have somebody like uh, have somebody like um, uh, Matt Ryan there to kind of, a as, as an offensive leader, to kind of help you install that, help you sure. re like refine it all through the year? Yeah, I think with Matt, you know, 14 years in, going into – you know, another year. There's not much he hasn't seen. Um, he's done it different ways. So when it comes to installing a certain scheme or concept, you know, typically he's probably done it. Um, doesn't mean that he always has the, the, the way he wants to do it is not always, hey, I want this way or nothing. You know, he's very open-minded in terms of things that maybe he's done in the past and then we brought to him that maybe a, a, a slight wrinkle to. But in general, I mean, again, anytime you have a veteran quarterback, I promise you, I've been on both ends of the spectrum. When you've got a veteran quarterback and you're going through concepts and how to see the big picture, a little easier than a guy maybe first time in the NFL trying to just grasp the idea of National Football League. So it's, it's definitely an advantage that way. Um, and he's been great in every regard. Professional, like I've always told you, uh, most professional player I've ever been around. Never cheated a snap, practice or a game. Gives you everything he's got. Is a great role model in terms of for the younger players to see. Um, one of the first guys out to practice um, takes his crap very serious, and I've got the utmost respect for him. As you talk, you talk about the cohesion and communication with those five guys up front, how does that impact whatever decisions you may have to make going into 2022? And you know whether you want to bring back those same five guys in the same five positions or. You know, sure. Do you feel like if you juggle personnel or positions, you lose some of what you've gained for 12 months? Yeah, I think that's a great question. I, I also think it's probably more of a question of two things. For Coach Smith and obviously Terry to kind of figure out from a personnel standpoint. And then, you know, right now we're focused on, on New Orleans. So anything past Sunday's game, you know, I have not entered my thought process. It's just about making sure that as a coaching staff and the offensive staff are ready to go and making sure our players are ready to go, which they've done a great job uh, yesterday and today's walkthrough. With Coach Kitchens gone, how did y'all end up doing the committee uh, for the running back? Yeah, sure. I mean, again, congrats to him getting a chance to, uh, to go do something in which I know he's got goals, uh, aspirations, and he has a chance to go do that. Um, you know, there's been guys on the staff that's picked up. Um, responsibilities. We've been, you know, I'm thankful that we have a staff that's flexible in that regard. Um, and we've been able to kind of do that so far, and hopefully that continues for the rest of the week. Anything else? When it comes oh. to you. We it? Oh. Uh, <laughs> Can I get in? All right. Yes. All right. <laughs> when it comes to uh, Frank uh, Darby, yep. how have you seen him develop, and what's the next step for him? Yeah, and again, I, the one thing when you, there's certain names, right, when someone brings them to you and something clicks right in your brain, and Frank to me is energy. And I've said that before. I mean, it's contagious. Um, you see him out there in practice. He's running around. Everything's full speed. Uh, doesn't know how to take anything half speed. Um, and again, he's always there with a smile on his face in terms of loves what he does, brings a great work ethic. And to me, that's only going to help him moving forward. Right? You look at this first year being in the NFL, different roles on special teams and then obviously filling in where he needs to at receiver and then hopefully right he takes that and goes into the offseason 
And then when he comes back here for the OTAs and training camp, just like all the players that we have back, right, a year of experience. And then you usually see that from year one to year two, a player take that next step. And we expect nothing less than from Frank. All right. Thank, you. Thank you guys so much all year. Thank you.